Hey there, welcome back to Cyber v Cyber Security and today we are going to talk about file inclusion vulnerability. So file inclusion vulnerability is a very important vulnerability according to the OWASP top 10. And in this video, we are going to cover everything about the file inclusion vulnerability. So let's get started. Before proceeding, there is a disclaimer for you. Hacking is illegal. So don't hack system of others without any permission. Use your own hacking environment and act responsibly. So let's move to the indexing part. So what you are going to learn in this video. So first of all, I will update you about the OASP top 10, the non-profit organization which tells us about the most popular and trending vulnerabilities. So first of all, we will cover that part. Then we will move to the find inclusion vulnerability. Here we will talk about the file inclusion vulnerability and then we will understand about the website structure, how files and folder resides into a web server. Then we will start the topic of local file inclusion that is LFI. LFI is a type of file inclusion vulnerability and we will talk about the methodology to find the LFI. Then we will talk about the exploitation and the impact. Then we are going to do hands-on practical over labs to find LFI. Lastly, we will talk about the countermeasures of the local file inclusion. Apart from this, we have the other part of the file inclusion vulnerability that is the remote file inclusion. And same, we will proceed with that also. We will talk about the methodology, exploitation and impact and countermeasures of the remote file inclusion that is the RFI. So first uh, talk about the OASP that is a non-profit organization. OASP is a non-profit organization that conducts various type of cyber security events, seminars, provide with the cyber security tools and also provide a report that is published once in every four years. So there are hundreds of vulnerabilities. What OASP do is OASP see the trends of the most popular and trending vulnerabilities and let us know what are the most critical vulnerabilities in the web application part. So we have top 10 categories of vulnerabilities according to OASP. As you can see here, all of the 10 vulnerabilities are listed here. These vulnerabilities are listed according to the trends and according to the criticality and severity of the vulnerability. So the vulnerability called the file inclusion that we are going to cover today also lies in the OASP top 10. As you can see, the very last report published by OWASP was in the year 2021 and before that we have seen the report in the year 2017. The file inclusion vulnerability lies in the category of injection attacks, injection vulnerability that was at the top in the year 2017. However, this uh, injection vulnerability has been shifted to the third position right now according to the 2021 OASP top 10 report. So the vulnerability that we are going to cover today is very important and lies in the top three as per the OASP research. So let's move to the file inclusion vulnerability. Before proceeding, I want to let you know that the file inclusion vulnerability are of two types. First one is the LFI called as local file inclusion and the second one is the RFI called as the remote file inclusion. So when we talk about the LFI, LFI is the local file inclusion. There are other names also of this vulnerability such as the path traversal vulnerability and directory traversal vulnerability. Don't confuse the directory traversal vulnerability with the directory listing vulnerability. Directory listing is another vulnerability. However, the directory traversal, path traversal or local file inclusion is a high severity vulnerability. The second part of the file inclusion vulnerability is the RFI that is called as remote file inclusion. In this video, we are going to first cover the LFI part, then we will proceed with the RFI part. Before understanding the LFI, we need to understand the web structure or the structure of the website. So suppose we have a Linux server and in Linux server, we are going to host a website. So how it will work? Basically, in the Linux file system, we will have a folder called var www and html. And if you want, if we want to host a site, then we are going to keep our all the web files inside the var www html folder. 
Also, we can do Apache service Apache to start in order to start the web service. So, inside the var folder, there is the www folder and there is the HTML folder. Usually, a website kept inside this folder and we are going to build a new folder called as public underscore HTML. In this public underscore HTML, we are going to keep all the files that are required to build the website, such as the home page that will be renamed as index.html so that the server must know what page must be shown as default when you access the website. Apart from this, there can be other pages also such as contact.html, about.html and there can be many more pages. Aside from this, you will see some folders such as an image folder. You can see some folders such as doc folder and more folders can be created according to the user need. So we need to understand the very first thing that the var ww html all these things are part of the linux server file system however all the entities inside the public underscore html is the web content that can be accessed via url in the browser so anyone having the full path of this content can access this content for example the website name is xyz.com so in this case whenever a user will type xyz.com in the browser he will be seeing index.html as the default or the home page of the website if he if he adds a address such as contact.html then he will see the contact page same he will add slash about.html then he will see the about page similarly if he add something like this such as img which is a name of a folder then he is going to be accessed to this folder there can be multiple files inside this folder such as picture dot png and similarly he can be able to access the image so what we have learned till now is that what ww html are the Linux are the files of the Linux server. However, all the things inside the public underscore HTML are all the web content that can be accessed via internet and with the full URL of the website. Now, one thing we need to clear is, suppose there is a file in this doc folder and the name of the file is file.pdf. So, what will be the full address of this file? It will be something like like this xyz.com slash doc folder docs and then we will see the name of the file file.pdf if we remove this file.pdf then we will be in the docs folder if we will remove docs we will see the home page part now there is no way we can basically move out of this public underscore html folder since everything outside this public underscore html folder belongs to the linux server that are the local files of the linux server therefore there is no way we can see any content at outside the public underscore html or there is no way to see the local files of the server i hope this part is clear to you now as we will proceed further in this video you will be crystal clear about everything and then we will understand about the local file inclusion vulnerability so here is a representation of the server in which you can see here is a folder var inside there is a folder called wwe and there is a folder called html in this html folder we will have a folder such as public underscore html and inside this public underscore html you will see all the web content such as index page contact page about page and about to page and all the folders such as image such as image doc xyz can be find here so that is what we have to remember a linux server will have a file system like this there can be a root location and inside that root location you will see a bin folder you can will be seeing a sbn folder you can, will be seeing an etc folder you will be seeing a var folder you will be seeing a temp folder and there can be many more folder like this inside this var folder there is a ww folder and there is an html folder and you know inside the html folder there is the public underscore html similarly in etc folder there can be a number of files and folder in the hbin can be a number of file and folder and in the bin there can be a number of files and folder and so on 
Now this clear understanding of the file system of Linux is very important in order to understand the file inclusion vulnerability. As you can see inside the root location we have the main folders primary folders of the Linux and in one of the primary folder called var we will have the web content inside the www.html folder and any user who is accessing the uh, web resource from the internet there is no way he or she can access the data outside of the public underscore folder. I hope that is clear to you. Now let's move to the topic called local file inclusion. So what is local file inclusion? So LFI occurs when a web application includes a file that is already present on the server. Attackers can exploit the vulnerability to include sensitive files such as configuration file, system file leading to information disclosure or even remote code execution. So what we need to understand sometimes a developer can call some file such as a web page or a picture or a doc or any sort of file and that file can be called via a parameter at the backend. So suppose we have a parameter called file and in this there is written the name of a picture that is the picture.png. Now as we can see the file parameter is having the value picture.png. Now what happened here the developer of this website is calling this picture.png and in order to call this picture he used a parameter called file. Now this picture.png is a web content however the parameter file is used to call that or retrieve that picture. Now what if I replace the picture.png with a payload that is able to retrieve a local file of the Linux server or the local file of the web server then this file parameter can be said as a vulnerable to the local file inclusion vulnerability. Let understand it better with the help of some example. So sometimes developer used to uh, retrieve a file via a parameter and that parameter is not properly configured or is not properly secured and that unsecured parameter can be used to retrieve a local file of the server or can be used to include a local file of the web server. In that case we call that vulnerability as the local file inclusion vulnerability. As you can see here LFI occurs whenever a web application include a file via a parameter or retrieve a file via a parameter that is already present on the server. So there is no problem in including a file but what the problem is the file parameter is user controlled means you can modify the value of the file parameter and call any another random file that is present on the web server or on the local machine of the server. Now this can be dangerous by exploiting this vulnerability the attacker will include sensitive files of the server such as the configuration file or the system files such as the password file which can lead to information disclosure sensitive information disclosure breaking of the CIA tried or even remote code execution. So what is local file inclusion? Local file inclusion is a vulnerability that is caused by a vulnerable parameter that was used to retrieve file from the server. Now that parameter can be replaced by a payload that can be used to retrieve file in unauthorized file that can be used to retrieve file in order to gain access to the unauthorized sensitive data that is demanded by the user controllable input. So if the input is user controllable user will going to inject a payload and that payload will fetch files from the server and after fetching the file the attacker will be able to gain access to the unauthorized sensitive data and that is called as local file inclusion vulnerability. I hope that is clear to you. In this video we are going to cover the practical part also so stick with us till the end. Now what is the methodology to find the local file inclusion vulnerability. So there can be two approaches to find the vulnerability. One is the black box and other is the white box method. In this video we are going to talk about the black box methodology that is generally used 
in auditing and in bug bounty operations so the very first step you need to do is the is to map the web application you need to map the web application find the every information about the web application every file and every folder must be mapped via burfoot or spider after that we need to find the parameters we need to find all the parameters that are used to retrieve data from the server any parameter such as file any parameter such as page that can be used to retrieve a file that can be like a and that parameter may be fetching a web page from the server such as contact.html or may be retrieving a picture from the server such as picture.png now after finding the parameter that is retrieving data from the server we need to determine the operating system of the server that is a very important part because according to the operating system of the server you are going to craft payloads now the next step is craft a payload accordingly to the server operating system of the server now inject and first payloads inject the pay value of the payloads in the vulnerable parameter and hit and try all the payloads and we can also say this as first payloads now after injecting the payload analyze the response see whether you are able to get the thing that you were looking for and if you come across with a security mechanism then you will need to bypass the security we are going to do all these things practically in this video in a few minutes now how to do exploitation if the operating system of the server is linux then we are going to craft some simple payloads for linux the simple payload look like this that is dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash and that it is a pass wd there can be other payloads also like absolute path payloads such as etc pass wd character escaping conditional payloads null byte payload encoded payload and double encoded payload so how these things work i am going to tell you we need to understand one thing that dot dot slash is equal to going back into the directory so if we have a var ww html if we add a path like dot dot slash here that means i am going back to the previous directory and if i again write dot dot slash that means i am going once again i am going back to the previous directory so these all things work like this so what this payload is doing basically it is saying to go back one time two times three times four times and after going back to four times such as var ww html public underscore html if there is a parameter that is calling in page for example it is calling a page that is contact.html so the page parameter is calling a page contact.html now focus on this part if this page parameter is fetching the contact.html page then what i am going to do i am going to add some prefixes and that prefixes will be the dot dot slash that will help me to go back in the server directories or in the server file system so when i will write dot dot slash it will move back to the html directory and then i will write dot dot slash then it will take me to the www directory and then if i write dot dot slash again then it will take me to the var directory and as you know var directory is in the root location and in the root location we have another folder called etc and then i am saying that let me just access the passwd file that is the pointers of the passwords of the linux operating system in this way we can go back outside the public underscore directory and we can access the local files of the linux server so that's how that works so we can craft some simple payloads such as dot dot slash dot dot slash and then we can try to access the etc passwd directory we can also try some absolute path methods such as the etc slash etc pass wd that is the exact path of the file i want to access there can be some security mechanisms also such as the server can be applying character escaping maybe the developer may have told that the dot dot slash string can be escaped and be replaced with a blank space in this case our payload will not work so what we are going to do we are going to do character escaping we are going to craft character escaping payload i will tell about this more in this video later we can also use conditional payloads we can also use null byte payloads we can also use encoded payload and we can also use double encoded payload if you are enjoying this video don't forget 
to like and subscribe this video and if you have any queries let us know in the comment section below. I will be more than happy to answer all of your queries. Now let's move to the exploitation of windows. So if the web server is a windows server then our payload will look like this. As you can see the windows file system using backslash using backslash in the directory structure. So everything is same here apart from the two things that we are using a backslash here and the other thing is we are going to access a file that is present on the windows operating system. So we will have simple payload, absolute path payload, character escaping payload, conditional payload, null byte payload, encoded payload, double encoded payload, all these things and we are going to try these things one by one. Now what is the impact of an LFI or local file inclusion vulnerability? So guys, LFI has a critical impact on the cybersecurity part. The very first uh, thing is that it compromises the conditions of the CIA trial. Like the confidentiality is breached and there can be some instances where integrity and availability pillar is also compromised. So if the attacker is able to breach the confidentiality, he will be able to access the etc passwd file or some other or shadow file or other sensitive files present on the server. In that case, it will lead to sensitive information disclosure that clearly breaks the confidentiality pillar of the CIA trial. Apart from this, in some cases it can also hampers the integrity of the data. In some cases, it can also hampers the availability of the data. In some cases, it can also lead to remote code execution. However, this condition is not always true. So, these are conditional. That's why I have put an F trick here. However, some things are common and mandatory. You will see there such as the unauthorized access. You will be able to read the files present on the server and also in some cases, you will be able to alter the state of the file or you will be able to remove the file. So these are the impact of the local file inclusion vulnerability. It hampers almost all the pillars of the CIA right and therefore the vulnerability is of high severity. So if you find this vulnerability it will go to high to medium critical level and you will be paid a decent amount for that. Now let's do hands-on labs in order to understand things better and in this session we are going to do hands-on over three types of labs. First we are going to uh, go to DVWA to understand the things better, to understand the file systems better and then we will move to Port Sugar Academy to bypass security measures and then we will move to the Port Sugar Academy in order to find vulnerability and bypass security then we will move to a Ubuntu machine and file the local file inclusion vulnerability at that part also. So before moving to the practical part again there is a disclaimer for you hacking is illegal don't intrude into the devices of others use your own hacking environment to hack things and carry out this thing responsibly. I am not responsible for any of your acts or deeds. So I am starting my VMware workstation here and I am going to start uh, two of my operating system. First one is the Kali Linux that you can download from the official Kali Linux website. I am going to start this machine and then I am going to start the meta exploitable to vulnerable machine. You can also uh, download it from the Rapid7 website, just Google Meta Exploitable 2 and you will get this vulnerable operating system. Then I am going to power on this machine also. Let me just log in and open my terminal. Now, since this, uh, after this meta exploitable machine gets boot up, uh, what I am going to do, I am going to find the IP of this meta exploitable machine. For this, for I will just execute a command ARP scan hyphen L. So I will be able to see all the devices in my local network. So I have got the IP of the meta exploitable 2 machine that is the 145.131. Now let's network scan this thing 192.168.145.131 verbose and port so as you can see uh, we can uh, there is port 80 
open on the uh, server that means http service is running on uh, the port number 80 and that also clarifies that there is a website running on the port 80 of the meta exploitable linux server so what i'm going to do i'm moving to the browser and i will write here the ip of the meta exploitable machine it is saying proxy server refusing connection that is because i have not yet started the burp suit professional so let me just start the burp suit as you can see i have started the burp suit now let's uh, reload this page page is reloading and the my proxy is on let me just uh, turn the intercept off and you will see here there is an dvw a dev dam vulnerable web application so here is a web application and this web application is vulnerable to many type of web attacks and one of the vulnerability that this web application carries is the local file inclusion vulnerability and we are going to do hands-on over this vulnerability how to find it how this works so uh, let me just log in the username is admin and password is password login first of all what you need to do click on the setup and create and reset database so uh, the database will be resetted now i will move to the dvw security and uh, turn the security settings to low so that we can understand the things better step by step now here we can see a file inclusion section now what is written here to include a file edit the page parameter in the url to determine which file is included so we are seeing a page of file inclusion vulnerability here now this page the name of this page is include.php as you can see here in the url this the name of this page is the include.php that is a php page and this page is called via a parameter and the name of this parameter is the page now this page parameter is actually fetching the include.php page from the web server and here it is also written if you want to include any file other than file other than this file or if you i want to call a another page then i will have to make the changes in the page parameter value so as I, uh, as we know that there uh, will be a page called index.php for sure that will be the home page of this website so i have written index.php and i am saying that please help me getting the index.php page as i have pressed enter you can see an error here you know? what is what this error says it is showing me a path var ww and the html and inside the ww folder we generally see the html folder but we don't have an html folder here instead of html named folder we have a dwf folder and we can clearly see that inside the dwf folder there is a folder called vulnerabilities and there is a folder called phi and there is a page called php so what this error is showing it is showing us the exact path of the index.php page now since uh, we have got the location of this page a real application will not so throw an error like this but we are here to understand the things better so uh, what we were expecting if the index page is inside of the five folder the uh, include.php folder will be also in the same five folder now if we want to access the index.php page it has not retrieved the index.php page so what if if i go back once in this directory then for that i will have to write dot dot slash when i wrote dot dot slash and press enter you can see no page is loaded here means we have moved from index.php to the five folder but still the page is not visible so what i am going to do i am going to go again back in the vulnerabilities folder and then i am going to go again back in the dvw folder then i am going to go again back in the ww folder and then i am going to go again back in the var folder so let me just add dot dot slash here and move back so as i have moved back you can see that now the index page is available to us the home page is available to us so how did we reach that page basically we have moved back two times outside the five folder so if i remove that 
just uh, remove this payload so uh, we have when we move one time back we have moved to the five folder when i moved again back when then we have went to the vulnerability folder we are going to call the index.php file so uh, we are able to access the dot dot so we are able to access the index page by moving two times back now what if i Now what if I want to access the local files of this Linux server. So let's find out what are the files that are for sure present in a Linux server. So we are going to look for files that will be available for sure in the Linux server. So we have a file called etc passwd. In order to in order to access the etc passwd folder I have again so passwd is a local file of the Linux operating system that is present inside etc folder and to do that what I am going to do I am going back till I reach the root location of the Linux folder. So uh, let me just move back uh, I have moved three times back so I have gone inside of five folder then vulnerabilities then dvwa then I have to go two more times back in order to reach the root location of the Linux file system. So I will write slash slash dash and now this will be the last back path and after moving five times back we will move to the root location of the linux file system and then we will ask it to please let me access the passwd file as soon as i have pressed enter you can see that i am able to see the all the files of the etc passwd folder i hope this part is clear to you if you have any queries let me know in the comment section now let's increase the security of this thing now let's increase the security of this thing but before that let me just check the backend source code so if i click on the view source thing you will see the backend code that is used to display this page you can see there is a php page and there is a parameter called a file and this file parameter is calling a web page via the get method as you can see there is no sort of restriction no sort of whitelisting or blacklisting provided here so this code is vulnerable and attacker can exploit this vulnerability the vulnerability present in this code in order to gain access to the pages or files that are the part of the linux web server now let's see increase the security to medium and then submit this thing now uh, i'm moving again to the uh, file inclusion and we will try again we will try the same payload here I am going to do dot dot slash 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 five times back and then I am going to write the etc passwd since I am the root location that I am saying that please move to the etc folder from the root location and there is a file called passwd I want to access the file I want to view the contents of the passwd file and then I press enter as I print as I enter you can see the code works perfectly but there can be one thing also what I can do I can provide an absolute path here like what an absolute path says that i am going to write the exact path of the file i want to access so i am saying uh, don't go back just move to the root location and in the root location you will see an etc folder and in the etc folder you will see a passwd file let's press enter and see if that works yes it is working properly so this code is also vulnerable to the file inclusion vulnerability Let's move to the view page source and see the backend code. Uh, as you can see, there is a backend PHP code, and this code is retrieving a web page via the get method with the help of file parameter. But also, we have some sort of security mechanisms applied over here, such as you can see the developer has provided a bad input validation here, in which he is saying that if any person tries to access a file that is starting with HTTP or HTTPS, then this code must replace that http and https string to a blank space so that any person will not be able to access a file that is present remotely on any server basically this code is restricting the rfi vulnerability that is the remote file inclusion however we will talk about that later now let's change it to high and we will go to again 
to the file inclusion folder. Now I will write dot dot slash 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 five times back. Then I will move to the etc folder. Then I will move to the passwd folder, and it is saying file not found. If you remember, we have seen that when the settings were at low and medium, we were encountering with an error, a real error message. But we are not provided with the real error message. However, this is an error that is developed by the developer. Let's try another sort of payloads and see if I, I am able to access the passwd file. No, it is saying file not found. It is not showing the real error, it is showing me a fake error. So let's check the source code of this. As you can see, the PHP code is at the back end and it is uh, also doing the same thing with the help of an parameter called file. It is going to call a web page with the get method and there is some sort of security mechanisms applied over here. Yeah, here it says if the file parameter is not equal to include.php then you have to throw an error called error file not found. So if the file parameter has does not value of include.php then it is not going to work and it will simply throw an error file not found. So this code is seems secure. So uh, the payload uh, that we uh, we will apply here will not work. See, it will only accept the include.php value there. Now since dbw is clear here now we are moving to the port sugar labs and check how that works over there. So I am writing here, I am going to the Google and on Google I am going to the port sugar labs. I have already created an account here. If you don't have an account on the port sugar academy, I recommend you to create an account by registering on to the website and in this website we are going to have a lot of challenges hands-on labs that will help us grow in the cyber security domain so let me look for path traversal here so we have number of labs on the path traversal vulnerability let's start with the very first vulnerability path file path traversal simple case so what it is saying so let's read the question this lab contains a path traversal vulnerability in the display of product images to solve this lab retrieve the content of the etc passwd file in this lab in order to solve this lab we need to fetch the content of the etc passwd file that is a sensitive file present on the server we need to access this file however there is a hint that the path traversal vulnerability is in the product images means uh, this lab can be a shop where you will see a number of products and the images of that product is fetched via a parameter and that parameter is vulnerable to LFI. So let's access this lab and check how the things work. So I am going to log in this to uh, academy if you have don't have an account I suggest you to create an account on the port server. So as you can see here, uh, this website is an e-commerce store and there are multiple products listed over here. As I can see, uh, if I click on the uh, home page, I will, I will be redirected to the same page. This page is the home page and there are number of products listed. If I click on the any of the product images, okay, I need to click on the view details. Then I will see the description of the product and as well as the image of the product. Now uh, this image that we are seeing over here is uh, retrieved from the web server via a parameter. Now let's uh, intercept this request and see what is the name of this parameter. So first uh, I am going to the home page. So I am uh, going to turn the intercept on, reload this page. As I have reloaded this page, you can see uh, that it is saying the request to this URL portsugar uh, web security academy dot net and the page is loaded successfully. Now you can see another request where there is an parameter called a file name and inside that file name we can see a value 5.jpg. 5.jpg is the name of the of a file of a jpg file that is a picture file and uh, that is the same picture that we are watching over here. Uh, let me just forward this request and it is calling all the images as you can see uh, all the images that uh, are listed here that are shown here are called from the web server via a parameter called file name. So it is very good. We have no problem with that. Uh, let's again intercept this request forward and now what I am going to do I am going to send this request to the repeater. 
let's move to the repeater and send this request normally when I send this request we have received the response 200 ok just render this and you will be able to see the image now what I am going to do I am going to replace the name of this image with a payload I will replace this image name with a payload so what is our payload we are uh, we want to access the passwd file so I have replaced the file name parameter value and now I and now I am going to send this request to the server let's click on go as you can see it is saying bad request no such file so what we are going to do let's go back and see whether we are able to access this file or not dot dot slash no we are not able to access this no problem dot dot slash again go bad request not a problem we will again go back with the dot dot slash and as you can see it is 200 ok and we are able to see the contents of the it is a passed file this file is sensitive and if you find this type of files on any of the website then you will be paid with a decent amount of bounty so we have successfully crafted a payload and what we have done here we actually moved back outside the public underscore html directory and we try to move to the root location of the file system and there we told that that we have moved to the root location of the file system of the linux server and then we are telling uh, the server to provide us with the etc passwd file i hope this part is clear to you let's move to the second lab so what it is telling us file path traversal traversal sequences blocked with absolute path bypass so this lab contains a path traversal vulnerability in the display of product images same thing however the, the applications this time blocks traversal sequences so uh, the application basically blocking traversal sequences that is the dot dot slash that are called as traversal sequences so this time the application will block the dot dot slash or the traversal sequences and therefore we will not be able to move back into the file system so but treats the user supplied file name as being related to a default working directory but the file name parameter that is retrieving the file here is user controllable so the user can control the file name parameter and the call all other files so what i am going to do just access the lab then we will analyze the website then we will turn on intercept and see the uh, all the request packets so going to the server and we will analyze all the response we will find the file name parameter and will craft the payload accordingly so we are on the home page now uh, let's turn intercept on and reload this page forward 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 as you can see here is the request so just uh, I am going to sending this request to repeater let's move to the repeater and just go uh, the, rep uh, the response from the server is 200 ok we will render this and we can see this the image of an baby here now what we will do we will change the value of the file name parameter so the file name parameter is fetching a file called 9.jpg i am going to replace it with the etc slash etc slash passwd now let's try the solution of the previous lab into this lab uh, let's try going back so it is saying 400 bad request let's go back let's go back again so this is the same payload which has successfully worked in the previous part but in this lab we are this payload is not working it is not working because what this application is doing it is blocking this traversal path that is the dot dot slash path so we are going to remove this thing and we are going to say the server that just go to the root location there is a folder called etc and inside uh, of the etc folder there is a call file called passwd so we i have given the exact absolute path here so let's try absolute path and see whether if it works or not let's do it go and you can see 
the this lab is already solved since we have accessed the path wd5 and we are able to view all the information here so this is the second part of the video as i have told you before that when uh, we have simple types of payload like the dot dot slash dot dot slash type of payloads and if there is some security that is blocking the traversal sequences then we will move with the absolute path payloads that does not have an traversal sequences but the exact path of the file now what if this absolute path is also blocked then what we will do now this all the things we are going to see further in this video so just stay tuned now i am going to turn the intercept intercept off we will again move to the labs part and as you can see here the third lab is the file path traversal traversal sequences stripped non recursively so uh, what uh, this lab is saying this lab contains a path traversal vulnerability in the display of product images the application this time strips so path traversal sequences so it is going to remove the path traversal sequences that we were using on the very first lab from the user supplied file name before using it to retrieve the lab retrieve the content of the etc passw file so in this lab the traversal sequences are basically stripped by the server but they are stripped in a non recursively manner in a non recursively manner so let's access the lab and see what we can do in this lab let me turn the intercept on and reload this page forward 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 and you can see the request here that is calling an image by a file name parameter Uh, let's send this request to repeater and just go to repeater and what we are going to uh, do uh, we are going to write the etc path wd let's try absolute path first so it is not uh, rep uh, it is uh, it is showing 400 bad request uh, it is not uh, providing us with with the content of the path wd file and we can clearly see the path w absolute path is blocked here so let's uh, try with the traversal sequences dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash and uh, it is also not providing us with the data right now so what the backend server is doing it is basically removing the traversal sequences in a non recursive manner non recursive means it is not going to execute the commands in a looped manner uh, whenever it will see a dot dot slash or a, a traversal sequences it will simply omit and replace it with a blank space now how we are going to bypass this thing so let's move to the ppt now if there is any sort of character escaping or any sort of we can say traversal sequences security mechanism is applied there then we are going to craft a payload in a way that it bypasses the security mechanism so what i am going to do instead of writing the dot dot slash i am going to write the dot 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 four dots and double slash going to do same for the and then going to same for the so as you can see i have crafted this payload i have manipulated this payload and now how it will be working let's see see the security mechanism is going to look for the uh, traversal sequences what is the traversal sequences dot dot slash i have selected this part here now since it is doing it non recursively it will remove this part after removing this part what we have got here we have got the traversal sequences again since it is not doing it recursively the second the second payload that we have received after bypassing the security will not get omitted so in this case this payload will work it will uh, it will omit this traversal sequences uh, non recursively and it will do it only once and after that we will get the exact payload what we want to execute there so just uh, let me just so we have got the payload here we have prepared a payload that uh, will bypass the character escaping or that will bypass the non recursively traversal sequences that will bypass the non recursively traversal sequences so just go 
and see whether we can access the file yes we are able to successfully able to view the file from the passwd file and we have bypassed a security mechanism here that is the we have bypassed the traversal sequences when they are stripped non recursively so that's how that works i hope this part is clear to you if you are getting these things just let me know in the comment section so that i can come up with this type of contents for you so guys i think this video helped you if you find this video helpful then let me know in the comment section and thank you for sticking to the video till the end so see you soon in the next part until then thank you very much for watching this video this is mayank from cyber v cyber security thank you for watching this video